Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. Thank God. Thank God for, for life. Thank God for peace. Thank God for bringing us together this month, November. It's good to see everyone here. If you know someone that is meant to be here, one of your friends that is meant to be here, is, that is not here, quickly chat them up, send them a reminder, tell them program has started. We've started Young and Godly program for the month of, September, of November. Praise the Lord. Wherever we are, I just want us to take a moment to say thank you to this good father. It has pleased him to keep us alive. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We honor you, our Father. First of all, this morning, we've come to say thank you. We've come to say thank you. We've come to say thank you for all you have done for us. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, good Father. Thank you, loving Father. Thank you, dependable one. We exalt you, Lord. We say thank you. On this altar, we've come to say thank you. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We thank you for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and now we are in November. We know that you that have seen us thus far, you're gonna see us to the end of this year and we say thank you. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for love. Thank you, Jesus, for the lovely people on this, on this platform. Thank you for all the mentees, all mentors, friends, young and old, even our parents. Father, we say thank you. We give you praise. We thank you for your presence in all of our programs. Thank you for your word that you've given to us, that you keep giving to us. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Be thou exalted. Father, we come in this morning unto your hands once again. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would dwell among us. You would have banner with us. Thank you, Jesus, because of assurance we know your word says we are two or more are gathered. There you are. Thank you, Jesus, because you are here with us. Sweet Holy Spirit, to pray that you have your way in our midst. Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way, have your way. Teach us that which you need to do. Help us to speak the, word, uh, the, uh, the mind of the Father. Have your way, Lord Jesus. And everyone that are yet to be here, that are meant to be here, that are yet to be here, Father, Holy Spirit, remind them. In the name of Jesus, be thou glorified, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name. We bow down before you. Wherever you are, I just want us to worship this father worship this king worship a good father he has been so good to you and your family worship him in this in this worship session our father in heaven we glorify your name we bow down before you our father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you, our Father, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Father, our Father, who art 
hearts in heaven. Amen. Hallowed be your name. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Hallowed be your name. You deserve a glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve a glory and the unknown. As we lift our hands in worship and we praise your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Thank you, Jesus, because there is no one else like you. Ah, thank you. We searched all over. There is nobody compared to you, Father. Thank you because there is no one like you in our life. Oh, thank you because you reign supreme in all that concerns us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Father. I lift up your name, O oh Lord. I declare your praise. I worship the great I am. No one like you. Lift up your name, O oh Lord. Declare your praise. Worship the great I am. No one like you. No one, no, no, no one. No one like you, no one, no, no, no one, no one like you. I lift up your name, oh God, I declare your praise, I worship the great I am. No one like you. I lift up your name, O oh God. I declare your praise. I worship the great I am. No one like you. No, 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 no. No one, no, no, no one. No one like you, no one, no, no, no one, no one like you, no one, no, no, no one, no one like you. No one, no, no, no one, no one like you. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
Alpha and Omega is your name. Oh Lord, how far and no Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh Alpha and no Omega is your name. You're Alpha, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, Alpha and Omega is your name. Oh, you are Alpha, you are Omega. You are the beginning, you are my hand in Lord. Oh, Alpha and Omega is your name. Yes, you are the Lord. Oh, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Oh, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Oh, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. You reign forever, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the King. You reign most high. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are the Lord. For sure you are the Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord, the Lord of our lives. Most high, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Oh, most high. Most high. Most high, only you will I praise. Most high, most high, most high, only you will I praise. Most Jesus, Jesus, only you will I praise, oh, Jesus, you are my Savior, hey, redeemer, only you will I praise, only you most high, you are my deliverer, and you are my lifter, only you, only you will I praise, oh, most high. And I say, yes, you are the Lord, oh, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, oh, 
most high. Most high God, we acknowledge you this morning. We declare you are the most high. 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 No one comes before you, Father. No one comes before you. You are the most high. And we declare that you continue to reign. Continue to reign in our midst, our God. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Amen. Over to you, ma. God bless you, Aunt Tolu. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friends, we are welcome in the name of Jesus to the last edition of Young and Godly for 2022. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, we want to thank you this morning the most high God, we adore you. We acknowledge you as our king, as our creator, as our maker, as our sustainer, as our helper, as our builder. This morning, Lord Jesus, we allow your holy name. We give you all the praise that is due unto you in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, we recognize you because we know that you have promised that wherever two or three are gathered, you will be there. So long as the gathering is in the name of God. So now we know that you are here to honor Jesus. We recognize you. We give you your place, spirit of the living God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray as we look into your word, as we have great time, with games, with testimonies. We pray that, Lord, you will use every of this medium to speak to our heart, and more importantly, to write something on the tablet of our heart, something that we can hold dear to, something that can guard our life going forward, so that we can show the praise of you that you have called us out of darkness to marvelous light, so we can stand as example of your children, truly. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, you are welcome in the name and name and name of Jesus. I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to see you online. It's been a great year. A great year. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, if you can use the chat window before I go, tell me one or two topics that we've done in Young and Godly that you know. I'm looking at the chat window. I'm looking at the chat. Tell me one or two topics. You know that you can one or two things, maybe, maybe not topics. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Waiting for the chat. One or two, one or two. Just put it in the chat, I'll see it here. Preferably a young adult, not, uh, not the adult. I can see so many people, so I don't want to mention them, so let's do it quickly. At least if I get one or two, then I won't, I won't have to call your name. You can use the chat directly only to myself or any co-host. So you should be able to send me. Yes. I'm seeing your messages. So send me. Or just keep it out. Thank you. I got one. Somebody said friendship. Yes. We did something friendship. about kinship. We did something on kinship. Thank you. I got that kinship. Thank you. Kinship, friendship, the same thing. Telling us about the difference between friends and acquaintance. Thank you. Something else? That seems to be something that everybody remember. I like that everybody's still putting the same thing. 
One more, one more, one more. Shemilore, you need to type. But if you want to say it, go ahead. Unmute yourself and talk. Yes, yeah, somebody said believe authority. Believe authority. Thank you. Believe us authority. One more, one more. One more. Someone says believe authority. Yes. Kinship. One more. One more, one more. Okay, I think I remember God's masterpiece in February when we thought from the book of Ephesians that we are God's masterpiece. I remember your decision, your life, when we thought from the book of Ruth. I think I remember that. I remember when we learned about the Holy Spirit. That topic was my helper. Somebody says difficult at times, okay? The great you, thank you. We thought the great you. Pastor Shoye Tobande took that class. I remember when we thought about the great you. There's greatness in you. Yes, yes. Thank you. I just want to be sure that we have things that you can say, this is what God has deposited in my heart for the year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This morning, we've come to a variety section. If you've been with us before, you know that Young and Godly usually runs between the month of January to November. So before we come again this way, if Jesus tarry, it's going to be January 2023 in the name of Jesus. But this morning, before we go to other things that we have, I would like to share one or two things. Open your Bible with me to the book of Psalm 84. Okay, try and open your Bible, please. Even if it's on your phone. And may I quickly announce that there'll be a game section later. So don't leave. If you want to win that prize, there'll be a Kahoot section later. All right, Psalm 84. And we'll read from verse 11. Psalm 84, verse 11. The Bible says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will leave withhold from those who walk uprightly. One thing we know about our God that is that our God is a very responsible father. He keeps his side of the covenant. All through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see things that God promised to do for his children. I can give you a couple. When he spoke to Moses, he told Moses, you know what? I will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Children of Israel, I will be the one that will keep fighting on your behalf. And all through scriptures, so long as they're on God's side, God came through. When God promised them, remember when they were living in Egypt, the Egyptian you see today, you will see no more. God meant business. That was an end to that struggle with Egyptian. So God said in Psalm 84 that we just read, the Bible says the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Bible says the Lord will give grace and glory and God himself promised. He said no good thing will God be told from those that walk uprightly. God is faithful and he always, always, always keep. He has promised, I said, the young lion can lag, but as men that will trust me, they won't lack any good thing. It says, when the enemy will come, the spirit of God will lift a standard against them, faithful God. So all through scriptures, if I'm going to ask you to say promises that God has given us, you see people typing. God says, I'll be the head and not the tail. God says, I will die. I will, I will live and I will not die. God said this. God said, and God is faithful, keeping his word. But we are not looking at God's promises this morning. I'm not looking at God's promises this afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm looking at God's expectation of you and I. You know, when you come to the Lord, it's like two parties. I was teaching a class last week and a question came, a young adult asked, he said, David killed Goliath. See, whose side was God? Was God, Goliath has not even killed anybody, but David killed him. 
whose side was God? I wanted to answer and say God was on David's side, but the Holy Spirit constrained me and said, no, God is God. It depends on who comes to the side of God. Remember that song we used to sing? Who is on the Lord's side? I want to know I am on the Lord's side. So God has a standard. It's you and I that will determine whose side we want to be. So I answered that young girl or young boy last week and said, you know what? God is God. Goliath chose to disdain God and say, I will show you that I'm powerful, I'm tall, I'm huge. I've been a warrior from my youth. David chose to say, no, you can't defile the name of the living God and stayed on God's side. Simple. So it's not a matter of whose side is God. No, no, God is not unfaithful. God is not partial. God says the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Then he puts a caveat. No good thing will we told from those who walk upright. Meaning if you want good things, you just fulfill that condition, walk uprightly, you fall into the category and you get all good things from the Lord. So this morning, we've established that God is not on anti Debbie side and uh, not on social side. No, God is for everybody. If you want him, Jesus said, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man, any man, Canadian, Caucasian, Arabs, African, if any man will open and I will come in, I will stop with him. So we've established that God is for everybody. It's your choice to come to the Lord's side or not. But this morning, if you have come to the Lord's side, if I'm on the Lord's side, what are God's expectations? Do I just come on the Lord's side and just stay there and say, you know what? You said no good thing. So bring all the goodies. I love our flyer. You could see different fruits inside that basket. So you know what? Bring all the goodies. Bring it on. I can just have them. I am on your side. What are God's expectations of you? I want to give you that word this morning. As you go through the month of December, preparing for another year, you know God expected. Does God expect anything from you or he doesn't? All right, come with me. First thing, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. I'll be very brief. I just want to mention two or three of God's expectation. Two, three of God's expectation. There are quite much in the Bible. And that's one thing I love. When I read the word of God, I want to see instructions. I want to see directions. I want to see what God wants of me. I don't just want to see what God will do because I know God will do his part. Matthew 22, verse 37, the Bible says, Jesus said, Jesus speaking, not the disciples yet. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great commandment. And the second like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, and all the law and the prophets. Finish. Jesus said, one of the key things, perhaps the most important thing that God expects of whosoever come to his side is that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, not just in a section, not just at a particular time. You won't come calling only when you need help, but you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, God's expectation. And it says, not just that, you will not love your neighbor, you will love your classmates, you will love your cosmates just as yourself. God's expectation. So number one, God expects you to love and serve him with all our hearts and to love others, love other people just as ourselves. What other expectation did God have of us? God has expectation, trust me. Look at Colossians chapter three. I will just say few, quite a few. So going forward, when you read your Bible and you say, God says, I will do this, I will do that. Please look out for what God expects as a responsible part of a family. If daddy will do this, mother will do this, there are responsibility on children too. Every person in the home, in an ideal home, in a society has responsibility. Every country, the government will say, you know what, for example, I'm in Canada. 
There'll be free education till grade 12. There'll be free health. But it's your responsibility that when you drive, you make the roads safe too. You are careful. It's your responsibility, you know, to vote if you're a Canadian. It's what you expect. It's a, it's a responsibility to keep to rules and regulations. So they'll do their part. The moment someone, you flaunt your own part, then that's where you see the police come in. They will do their part. But if they put 70 kilometer per hour drive, they expect me to keep to that. If they get to school zone and they say, no, this is 30, they expect me to slow down. They've done their part by putting the, a, a board, there's something to show and say, this is the expected speed limit. They also expect us to respond. So what else is God expecting of you as a child of God? Colossians chapter three, verse one, the Bible says, if then you were raised with Christ, if then you have encountered Jesus, if then you have left the other side and you have decided to camp with Christ, seek those things which are above. So God expects me to focus on him. God expects me irrespective of my age, irrespective of my color. So long as I'm a child of God, so long as I name the name of the Lord. Another scripture says, let all that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. It's an expectation. God is saying, if you must say you belong to me, then you must completely run far, depart from iniquity. Colossians says, you should seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above. I'll read that from New Living Translation. Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor. Think about the things of heaven, not on things of earth. Can you imagine God's expectation? God expects you that your reality, the thing if you must daydream at all, if you must just like, hmm, should be on things above. Verse two, think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. For you died to this life. Your real life is hidden with Christ in God. God expectation. God expectation. I read one that, you know, that was a scripture I just quoted now, where the Bible says, those that name the name of the Lord, that was said by Paul, must depart from iniquity. If you must name God's name, you must turn away from every unrighteousness. God's expectation. God's expectation. So it's not only us that have expectation from God. That scripture is in 2 Timothy chapter 2. I was looking into it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. The Bible says, nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. God's expectation. God's solid foundation is firm. So it's not a matter of how who is God supporting or which team is God supporting. No. But God's truth stands firm like a foundation that cannot be destroyed. Another version said, the Lord knows those who are his and all who belong to God must that's New Living Translation. A very strong word. Must turn away from evil. So God expects you to turn away. God expects me to turn away. God does not want us to come month into month. Or perhaps some of us that have some smaller groups that you belong to. And we have chats and we read books. God does not expect us to remain the same. God expects you to turn from iniquity. What other expectation of God quickly as I begin to round up? Romans chapter 8. What is God expecting of you? You know, God, what you expect from God. When you wake up in the morning, I love the way young adults pray. Father, thank you. Please, can you protect us? Can you heal us? You know, they just throw it at God and say, God, do this. And that is who he is. He's a father. So God says, yes, I will. You go out in safety and you will return. But can you also honor me? Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. What's another expectation? The Bible says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. That is what God is doing for us. He's taking away the guilt. He took away, actually, the guilt, the shame, no condemnation. Verse 2, and because you belong to him, the power of life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin. 
because you belong to him, you are free completely from the power of sin. That's God's expectation. You don't, you no longer stay under sin. Look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I'll read New Living, another expectation. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Wow. God expectation. Says, I plead with you. Someone asked me, what is the topic? I'm talking about God's expectation of us. Paul wrote that word, pleading. KJV used the word, I beseech you. I'm begging you that you give yourself as a living and holy sacrifice. I'll read that scripture again. So, brother and sister, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Has God done something for you this year? Has he done anything for you, for your family? Then I plead with you, I plead with you to give your body as a young adult, to remember all. Have you been in a situation before and you pray and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me mm. in this exam. Come through for me. Lord, help me. And God has been faithful coming through. So we plead with you once again that you give your bodies because of as a living sacrifice to God because of all the Lord has done. I'll continue reading. I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of what he has done. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable. Meaning it's not all sacrifice that God accepts. God does not accept all sacrifice. Sacrifice of time, sacrifice of prayer, sacrifice of fast. God does not accept all. So if you must do it at all, make sure that it's acceptable. I'm always careful whenever I want to do something for God. Why will you come and, you know, say I'm working for God. Some of us are young and we are ushers, we are choir. Some of us are, you know, teachers in, the, in Sunday school. You sing in church. You join so many things. But the Bible says you are acceptable service. The one that God sees first is that you present yourself as a living sacrifice. You present your body holy, blameless because of what God has done for you. Now I'm going to read. This is truly the way to worship him. If you truly want to worship God, this is the way. Verse two, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Wow. Don't copy. My friend did it. That's where they do it in North America. That's where we do it in Arab world. It's a Nigerian thing. The Bible says, don't copy the behavior of this world. Then he didn't leave us without what to do. It says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. Wow. KJV says, you should be transformed. Do not conform. Don't conform to the standard. Don't say, yes, that's how they do it in my school. Or that's how they do it. Anything you want to join or be part of, ask yourself, is this how God wants it done? God's expectation of you. God's expectation. Open your Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. If you can open your Bible, if you have them written, that would be beautiful. Verse 12. Don't let anyone think less of you. Be an example to all believers. I love that scripture. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone think less of you, but be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in love, in faith, in purity. Paul was telling Timothy, don't let anybody despise your youth. God's expectation. So God expects you to be an example. Anytime God sees you in a congregation, in a group, God is happy and say, yeah, if I is going to represent me well. Yeah, I know. Adeshua will represent me well. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. yeah. My voice, my, my opinion will be known because David is there. God says, be that example, not just example to anybody, even to other believers. Be the one that they can use as a yes. As a, have you seen this? God expectation. If you look at every 
age and time. God had expectation. And what pleases me is that in every generation, God's expectation was met. Look at the time of Noah, when people were behaving anyhow and getting into all manner. The Bible talks about a man named Noah. Look at the time of Job, when the devil will go to God's presence and say, oh, let's do this. Look at this man is just honoring you. God found a man, Job. Look at the time of children of Israel, when they were crying and crying, God found a man, Moses. Look at the time of Ruth, when God needed someone to pastor and say, I'm going to just get the savior from this lineage. God found a young girl, a widow, faithful. So I don't have an excuse. In every generation, God is always seeking a man. A man that will fit that expectation of his. Will you be that? Will I be that? Look at the time of Esther. When Naaman was doing Buddha and was doing anything, God found a modeka that will help me Esther. And Esther in palace, they will say, if I die, if I perish, I perish. But I will not eat, will not drink myself and my maid. We will go and pray. Look at the time of Daniel, when everybody was eating, as if the king's meat, bah, 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 everything. Daniel said, you know what, keep it, keep it, keep it. I would not defile myself. God found a man. Look at the time of Nehemiah. The building was broken down. And a man was in the king's palace, but he had the news and his heart was broken. And he had the heart to walk. When Sambalat and Tobiah were doing, he was focused. Look through the Bible, you will see that God always finds a man in every generation. Are you that boy? Are you that girl? Are you that young adult? No matter the generation, generation this, generation that, no matter, God has a standard. And he has men that is looking up to us. If only I would find 10. Look at the time of the apostle. When Jesus went up, God found some people that would stay till they were endued with power. Look at another scripture. I would love to read that scripture before I go. Acts chapter 1. Another expectation of God. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you will be my witnesses. God wants you to be his witness. He wants you to be his testament. He wants people to be able to see expression of him through you. God found some men that were faithful to remain till they were endued with power. When they were beaten and beaten, they said, how can we not speak of the things that we have seen and we have heard? In every generation, God is looking for men. He's looking for men that will meet his expectation. Friends, God has expectation. And that's the charge I want to give you this morning. That's the charge I want you to go with this morning, this afternoon, this evening before I see you again next year. Tell yourself God has expectation and this expectation can be met. So it's not that, oh God, this expectation, this, this, this expectation are things that nobody can meet. No, I've given you different examples of different generation and those expectations were met. There were people in that generation that said, no, others may, I can't. So will you be that boy? In the city you are, God has expectation. In the school you are, on that campus, in that university that you are, God has expectation. God has expectation. We read in Acts chapter 1, say, you will be my witnesses. We read in Romans, he said, do not conform to the standard of this world. This world has a standard. Don't conform to it. God's expectation. We read in Colossians, focus on this above. So as you read your Bible, as you go through studying the world, always ask yourself, what is God's expectation of me? And in doing this, you'll be his disciple indeed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to pray at this time so we can go to other things and begin to ponder, begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what's your expectation? What do you expect from me? You can tell the Lord, Lord, what do you expect? I don't want to fail you. I don't want to disappoint you. If you will need a man, a boy, a girl, a, in this generation, I will be available. I will look into the perfect law of liberty. I will not just be there to claim promise, claim promise, claim promise. I will see the things that God expects and I will stand under God in prayer to live to that expectation. Father, we give you praise and honor.
Everlasting Lord, we want to thank you for every of your grace that you have poured upon us. Thank you because you first loved us. You took the first step. You gave yourself. You gave your life. You shed your own blood. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for grace to come to you. This morning, you have told us just a little bit of your expectation. Your expectation, you have shown us. You want us to come out. You told us, I said, come out of them, and I will accept you. You told us what relationship was, does light have with darkness? You have taught us so much, oh God, of your expectation. You have told us, Lord, we pray, help us, oh God, to be willing and to pay the price and to be yielded even to you in the name of Jesus. And as we do, Lord, we know you are faithful. We read in Psalm 84 verse 11 that the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will you withhold from those that walk uprightly. Thank you because you are faithful to keep your word. We know you as a son, as a shield, that you will keep us, Lord, and no good thing will you withhold for us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Oh, yes. We're moving quickly this morning. And we're going to be having some sections, something different from what we used to have. We're going to have a testimony quickly from one of our young adults. You know, he's been with us for a while and he's still with us. But now he's an undergraduate he's in the college or university, as the case may be. And I'm going to call on Tommy Olu Afemi to share a testimony. So we're going to have testimony time. People want to share some experience with us. So listen and be blessed. He's told me there somewhere. Tommy yes, Olu. ma. Yes. yes okay, ma. Reverend, please spotlight Tommy for us. And over to you, Tommy. God bless you. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as she said, my name is Tommy. Most of you do know me as Tommy. And today I'll just be sharing my testimony with regards to what I've learned from, you know, the monthly meetings as a member of Young and Godly. So I've been a member of Young and Godly since grade nine, and I just currently graduated high school. So that's about like four years. And I've attended like various meetings hosted by this club. Prior to the Zoom meeting format that we have now, we used to hold our meetings at PPP. And we came together and then we just prayed. We shared the word, we divided ourselves up into groups and whatnot. I also remember like Saturday prior to the prior to the pandemic thing, we also went downtown as a group and went to evangelize and give food to the less fortunate. So there have been lots and lots of experiences with you no know, young and godly. And those experiences as imprinted in me. It has imprinted in me some lessons. And three of these lessons I'll be sharing with you all. So the first of these lessons is that Christianity is really a personal commitment. You know, one thing I was taught here is that you're not born a Christian. You might ha have been born in a Christian household. You might spend every other day in church. Your parents might even be a pastor, you know, but that doesn't make you a Christian. You only become a Christian until, you know, you confess with your mouth and believe your with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And also, another thing I learned here in regards to that same theme was that there's a difference between like a church goer and a Christian. Some of us just, you know, go to church because our parents are going or we view it as a social gathering where we get to meet our friends. And this was actually once me, once upon a time. You know, my parents go to church. I tag along, I follow, I get to meet people, I talk. And that's kind of how I view church. And through this gathering, I guess I've also gotten a new perception that church is not just about, you know, meeting people and just talking and you know you actually come together and learn about jesus and you learn about you know god and there's more to that experience than just social interaction i guess and that difference i guess i said earlier that there's a difference between a churchgoer and a christian and that difference is really evident in our perception the other day i think i remember speaking to someone who said something along the lines of i shouldn't have come to church today because a lot of people were out of town and that really, really shocked me and kind of stood with me. And, you know, this lack of personal commitment to God and to church and, you know, just tagging along 
kind of Christianity that some of us do manifest sometimes shows itself as like lack of interest in preaching prayers and praises. Later down the line, we're gonna end up leaving on our own. We leave our parents, we go to college, we go, you know, start our own family, start our own lives. Some of you, it's still a long ways ahead. For some of you, you know, it's as soon as next year. So without a personal commitment to the faith and without your personal, without your parents there to remind you that, hey, you're supposed to be in church at this time. Hey, you're supposed to be praying at this time. We're going to find like seemingly valid reasons for not going to church or not to pray or to not read your Bible. So I think it's very important that in this journey of faith, that we should actually make that personal decision that we want to follow Jesus and we just don't want, you know, tag along kind of relationship. Another lesson I learned from this was with regards to time. <clears throat> One Bible verse that I remember was Psalm 90 by verse 12. And it says, teach us a number of days that we may gain wisdom, gain a heart of wisdom. And this verse is a prayer of the psalmist. He asked God for wisdom to account for our time. Time is a very, very uh, interesting thing. You know, it's finite and it's uncertain. Once it goes by, it cannot be recovered. Today is the 12th of November, I believe. And there would never be another 12th of November after this day is gone. That's kind of it, you know? So it's extremely paramount for us to ensure that we're spending our time wisely and we're doing it in a way that brings honor to God. Even Jesus said in John 9 verse 4 that I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Then I come it when no man can walk. So we have to actually focus and, you know, pray for that wisdom that the psalmist, like the psalmist did there, you know, so that we know how to spend and allocate our time properly and use it to God's glory. Finally, the last lesson I learned from this whole experience was with regards to the company that we keep. Uh, this was something that Auntie Debbie uh, addressed earlier while speaking. You know, we grow up, we grow older, we meet a lot of different people. And the way that we kind of interact with these people can have an impact on us. And we can also have an impact on them. And a very, very popular Bible verse that kind of, you know, captures this, captures this very well that most of you would know would be 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. And it says, don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad, bad company can corrupt good character. And I remember a while back, I guess before I went to I went to college, before I went to uni, I was speaking to Auntie Debbie with regards to peer pressure and, you know, poor company. And she said something that struck with me. I told her that I was kind of, you know, nervous about the people I would meet, the people I would interact with and the relationships, you know, that you might eventually form and she said like why is it always us christians who are afraid of being like impacted by our association with others you know why are others not being impacted by our association with us and that has kind of stuck with me like we as a group we often try to copy people we try to fit into like you know the status quo we try to fit into like a set standard so that we don't be we are not seen as different that we're not seen as like you know not ordinary and like whatnot, but really we're supposed to be that beacon of light. We're supposed to let our light shine before others so that, you know, they may see our good deeds and glorify our father in heaven, as the Bible says. So rather than conforming to the norm, rather than trying to be, you know, what other people expect us to be, we should set ourselves up to be the benchmark. And that really is all I, you know, I guess a quick summary of what I've learned over the last four years. I hope you are blessed. God bless you, Tommy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I must say that you, you're looking a little different. You're really looking like, a, like an undergrad. <laughs> Just, you're looking a lot different. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I'm, I bless the Lord that you've been able to keep some things to heart. You're able to take us down memory lane when we used to, you know, go to church building to gather and redeem church peculiar people here in Regina. And we didn't have other people from other parts of the world. And COVID came, yeah. but God brought it for good. And, you yeah. know, that yeah. helped us to launch into other places and we came on Zoom. And I'm glad that 
you had something, you know, that you could say yes. And I trust the Lord that in the name of Jesus, you will continue to be a light. You will continue Amen. to shine and stand for Jesus. This morning, again, God Amen. has told us this expectation of us that you will be that man that God will find faithful to stand tall in that university campus and shine his light, not disappointing in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You don't know how much you've loved on me this morning too. Thank you. All right. I have another mentee that would like to say one or two things. And yes, where is my daughter? Over to you, Nifemi. Okay, thank you, ma. Um, my name is Nifemi Oni, and I'm in grade 11. So ma, I'm still in high school. And I think I started with this ministry in, I think I was in grade eight, maybe, grade seven or eight, along those lines. And so just really, it's been a long journey. That's almost like three, four years now. And so there has been different ways that being in this, being in Young and Godly has impact, impacted my life. And so one of the ways is that the, obviously the teachings that we learn, it, it really ingrains like morals and establishes us and trains us and gives us teachings that can help us later in life. As we can see in Tommy's case, he's already like, he's in like undergraduate now and he's still like with those morals and teachings that has been taught to him. And so it's been a really good way to just like ingrain ourselves. Um, Proverbs 22 to six talks about like training up a child the way that is supposed to go. And then when they grow older, they shall not depart from it. And so it's really, a, Ryan Gola has been a great way to like teach myself and like, also helps setting the foundation for our later lives because we're starting this earlier. I like the emphasis on the young. We are young children and we are in this program that's helping us in, and as just building us up and we can use it later in our life. And so one of the things that I personally learned is um, quiet time. That wasn't something that I knew before. We stay young and godly and I actually learned about it in young and godly. Having a quiet time and your own personal time with God. I used to think that when I was young, I used to think that um, prayer with God was just limited to like family devotion because that was what I did but like I learned about quiet time and spending having that personal time with God and it's really like having a quiet time really helps when I first started learning about it I used to do it in the night because I just I'm I'm an early riser but I didn't want to do it in the morning it's just the thing I'm an early riser but I didn't want to do it in the morning and I know so you talk about how it's, it's good to like start your day and end your day with God so I I try to do endeavor to have it in the morning because it just means I have to wake up even earlier, which is something I'm okay with. And honestly, being in grade 11 now, I say like school is getting tougher and academics are getting like tougher. It's sometimes hard to find that time in the morning to, to like have that personal time with God. I have an exam today. Uh, let me study for my exam instead. And uh, one of these things, this is actually something that happened um, this week. I had, there was one day I had two exams and I really wanted to study for my exams. And it was early in the morning and I was around the time I do my quiet time. And I was just thinking that, ah, I, I, like, I didn't want to do it. I was being kind of honest. I just wanted to, I just wanted to do my, I study for the exam. But then I really thought about like all the things I learned about quiet time and how it's like, it's, it's good to start your day with God. And so I found that time and I don't know how, because thing is i was just thinking about the math uh, by the time i use one hour for quiet time i don't have any time to study i have to go out my bath uh drive really want to do this but i still did it and my day went that was like i was one of the most stress-free days i've ever had like since i started grade 11 with all of the assignments like the assignments the, the exam that i had was like so easy like it just really like made me think back on all the things that we've learned that starting your day with god is a really important factor of your life and it's really good because even just find that time to like designate designated time for God and it's really easy. Your day is like easier. Even though you might think that I have other things I want to do, your your priority should be God first. And I'm by I don't know if it was at Debbie that talked about this, that we should not center um God around our lives, but we should center our lives around God. And so God should be in the middle. Actually, yes, I think it was at Debbie. God should be in the middle. And we should branch out into like different aspects of our lives. Not that our lives is here and that we're trying to find space for God. So that's one of the things I've learned to Young and Golden. 
it was uh, um, people were talking about kinship yes um friends very important um differentiating between friends and acquaintances is always something that i personally sometimes i'm a people pleaser i just like as someone comes to me and like yeah i'll, I'll help you do as well but you should always have that like you should know when to differentiate from people who are people are actually your friends who are the people that are there to build you up that sh- that will sharpen you and so that being it, my next point, We Are Ungodly is a platform that provides you to be able to connect with people that are like-minded like you. It, it, it really introduced me to a community of people who have the same values as me. And so that's one of the things I'm going to for Young and Ungodly because I get to meet new people who are just not, who have the same like interests, who have the same values as me, like I have the same age mates. And that's one of the actually one of the benefits of Young and Goldie. It provides a community for you where you can be safe, where you can share. And it really helps you to like connect with one another. And then one of the last things that got Young and Goldie has really helped me with is mentors. I really liked having a me- I have a mentor. I really like having a mentor. And remember when we first started talking about mentors, this was before we didn't have any mentors in Young and Goldie. Um, they always talk about like having a mentor and having someone that's like helping you in life, but I didn't really know how to go about it. And then that's when Young and Goldie now started that system of having like different mentors for the different age groups, which is something that I really commend it for because it really recognizes the importance of having a, a prominent figure in your life that you can talk to, someone that can give you insights and it's not just on spiritual matters alone, and I like how it's not just about spirituality, but also like just all around matters in life, the general matters in life in school. Having someone that you can be able to talk to is something that we really need as young, as young people, having that adult to be able to go to. And the difference between having a friend you can talk to and having a mentor is that your mentor has insight, your mentor is experienced, they have experience in life. They, the most of the times we, we like to feel like oh we're the only ones going through these things but our mentors do they've gone through these things before they know what we're going through and so they have that experience it's different from going to talk with your friend because you have someone that can actually give you insightful advice on what to do and so that's one of the ways that um, you know, has really impacted me um my my own mentor is sister debbie and she's really someone that you can confide in and so um i think first Peter two you no know, first Peter five them versus like one to five talks about having like um the shepherd and the great shepherd and talks about having those who the elders who can lead the sheep in god's church and being able to lead them with passion in their hearts and they're not just doing it because it's something that we're looking to do but having someone who is truly passionate about helping you in life about helping you not making the same mistakes that they did is really something that can really steer you in the right path that God wants you to go to. So that's my intake from Young and Godly. Thank you very much. Oh, bless you, Nifemi. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's good to hear from you. Like, we want to hear in your own word, in your own word, if this has rubbed on you. And because of time, we only got to, we only got to take two. We only got to take two of our mentees. You know, if, I mean, I'm sure I could give everybody one platform, th- this platform, they'll have one or two things to say, how the year has been or the journey so far. And we return all glory to God. We do not take pride in any of this. I love a scripture of Philippians 2. The Bible says it is God that walk in us, both to will and to do. So it is God that put the body in. It is God walking behind the scene. And we return all glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we've come to another stage. And this one, I love it. Just like I love the rest. Anyways, we're going to quickly play a Kahoot game. So people that put a base, mm-hmm, people that put in family name. I hope when the winner is announced, we'll call it a base. By then, don't, don't argue. Don't fight. <laughs> so get ready. And pretty soon we'll start a Kahoot game. Because of time, we may not take all the questions, okay? Because we still have one or two things to do before we go today. So I'm going to share my screen, get ready. Make sure you put your name, put your name the way I know it. Don't put your name that I don't know, the way I know it so that when you, if you are the winner, when we are reaching out to you, We'll be able to, you know, don't put name. I see some name like O, P, 
I won't know who that is. So please put your name in the way I know it. Please don't, uh, don't give this to mom and dad to do. I believe that we are children of God. So be as sincere as possible, okay? You see, it's very simple. It's a very, very simple question. We're going to start pretty soon. Don't unmute yourself. Mentors, can you kindly mute everybody for me? Thank you. Thank you as you join. Put the name I can know. Put the name that I know. Thank you. I can see Royal, Peculiar. Thank you. Daniel, Mayoku, Demi, and Josh. Thank you. Put the name that we can relate to. Thank you. We'll give some one or two more minutes for other people to join. Teacher, I'm not inside there. Okay, so do go ahead and join. <laughs> That's the Wait, but how do I join? I don't know how to. Go to daddy. Go to daddy to help you join. Okay, let me go to dad or mom. Go to someone to help you join. Ajayi said he can't join. I guess that's the fan. Esther, why can't you? If you go to www.kaut.it to ask you for a pin, so that's the game pin, you should be able to join. And if you can't join, just enjoy it. Okay, just watch and enjoy it. Yippee, I love this aspect. I just love that aspect. I can see the Bitaios, thank you, all the way from Dubai. Isaac Bitaios, I can see you, thank you. Um, we'll still give another minute or two. Kemenire, I can see you, thank you. Yeah, let's still give a minute. Let me go to Ahu Talk now. Ahu.it, and you can just join. That's it for that pin. So we'll start the game in a minute. And by then, please make sure that you are muted. So it won't, uh, it won't have this I number. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, I'm going to join still. Press button. We just started. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm counting down to 60 more seconds for me to start. Yes, thank you guys for joining. Thank you so much, I can see you. Thank you. Raymond, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm counting down to start because of time. Right, make sure you are muted. The question we show you, yeah, I said, thank you for joining. From Calgary, I can see you. Thank you, Bukumi, thank you. People are still joining. Oh, okay, let's go, let's go. Let's do it. It will display the question and the answer. You, so you just answer and. Anel and David, you're welcome. Yes. All right. We go for it. No, someone just sent me a message. One second. Uh oh. If you can't join, just enjoy it. Okay, enjoy it. This is for the fun of it. We have that six people on, on it now. Let's start. God bless you.
Mm-hmm. Oh, so nobody chose Lagos. Everybody knew Jesus was not born in Lagos. Okay. All right, stay there. Let's go. Nobody chose soldier and all right, Annie, let's do it. Let's go. Mm. Check your Bible if you doubt it. Yeah, that was Simon. You're right. Yes, Jamilo Jude. That's good. <laughs> Now go for this quickly, you can do it. You bet, yes. You can do it. That was John. John the Beloved wrote the book of Revelation. Yep. Beautiful. It was on his way to Damascus. All right, we have a few more. Make sure you keep at it.
So pay attention. Wow. David Adair and Joshua. Only one person get the prize in this card. Not one, two, three. Only first position. What tribe of Israel was called from? I think it's Benjamin. We can doing? hear you. We can hear you. Jomology took back her position. This one is very tricky. Yes. What? All right, we'll we take it to 20 because of time. And we take our final from number 20, go. Luke was a physician. So we'll take one more. Are we is a woman? No, two more. This is 19. Sorry, I'm gonna skip this. Sorry, I'm not gonna count this. So I'll give you two more. Prodigal son. Let me let you take one more and you win. <laughs> wow, this one is tricky. Sorry, we're going to skip this. Yeah, no, we're going to skip that. Take one more. Those ones, yeah, those ones are very, he said those things, those are very tricky. Those answers are not too good. What is this? Sorry, guys. Sorry. Okay. That will be the last question. You got it. Let's see. So Jovelodu Lippi. So Jovelodu came. So Faith, you did very well. Somebody put in self or ourselves as two. Wow. Nifemi Oni, thank you. We all did beautifully well. But Jovelodu, it seems like every year you, every year, every year you always get a gift. <laughs> from the count. So yes, Jamiloju, 
Aribo, except there is another Jomiloju online. So let me be sure. Is that Jomiloju Aribo? Yes, ma. Okay. Because I want to be sure. <laughs> so Jomiloju Aribo came first for this year, Kaut. Congratulations. But we are all winners. That's the truth. We did it just to test our knowledge of the world, to have good time together, fastest finger. And you know that we do that every November. God sparing us. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Now we go to another set of testimonies. And this time we'll be hearing from the mentors. We've had, we've, we've had from the mentees. This time we'll be hearing from the mentors. All right, so first I'm going to be calling Sister Funke from Calgary. Over to you, ma. She wants to tell us, you know, some key things. So listen to her. The next few minutes, and you will be blessed. God bless you, ma. Thank you, ma. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Yes, ma. So thank you, Sister Debbie, and everyone for this great privilege to share this um, experience, my Christian experience thus far in life. And uh, from what I have here, I've been asked to share about growing up salvation experience out with that one and uh, I would like to can't hear you mom we can't hear praise the lord is it clear now? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay, I'm so sorry. Just uh, going to up here. Okay, so. We can't hear you again. I can't hear you again. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to switch now. Hello. Yeah, we can help. We can hear you. Okay. I okay. If it happens again, I'll just switch system here. Okay. So I'm um, I'm grateful to God. I was brought brought up in a Christian home, and uh, so like uh told me from not me secondly said, I started going to church and you know getting involved in church activities and all that. But along the way, I got into secondary school, and then I would say my personal journey with Christ really started. I was introduced to um, a gospel church. Uh, before then, I used to go to, um, what was it called? An Orthodox church, yeah. So in the gospel church, uh, in the Pentecostal church, you know, we were asked about uh, giving our lives to Jesus. And I remember on one of the occasions, I came out, accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And there my journey started off, knowing God and, you know, getting more intimate with God and getting to know his will and all that. And so there, I know I say going in the Lord more and more. And one of the things I would say helped me is the fact that I was, you know, by the grace of God, careful with the kind of friends I kept. Um, like the scripture says, um, uh, yeah, wrong uh, company with corrupt good manners. So I was also careful, you know, to go along with friends who I knew were going to like you know impact me the right way so that helped me a great deal keep being careful of the friends I kept watching my company and all that so but together with friends we're growing up in the Lord fellowship and all that so that helped me a great deal to watch you know my path and all that and one of the things I also would point ref make reference to today is one scripture that stands out for me and that's found in first Corinthians 10 verse 13. First Corinthians 10, 13, I will read the NLT version, really sheds light on what I'm going to talk about. First Corinthians 10, 13, if you have it also, you can please join me as we open together. Okay, it says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. It will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you're tempted, it will show you a way out so you can endure. Praise the Lord. 
And, you know, I would use these to also encourage the young and godly. And why am I making reference to the scripture is oftentimes, um, at this point in time in life, most young uh, adults or teenagers, you know, sometimes when we parents are like trying to correct and, you know, make reference to our life and all that, so many believe that you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't know it. You don't, you haven't been there. But the truth is that there is no temptation that you're going through that someone hasn't gone through. And most often your parents have gone through similar things. And, you know, because of what they've gone through, most times we don't want repetition. We don't want you to fall into the same pit we fell into. And that's why we would, you know, come up with counsel, come up with, you know, prayers and all the godly advice all in the bit to like help you, safeguard you from falling. And that was one thing that helped me as well, that the temptation I went through it, I knew, you know, I went through, I knew other people have gone through it. And, you know, knowing that fact and with God on my side, I was able to navigate, you know, the, the, the growing up days. It wasn't that it was temptation free. No, there were lots of things that happened. Things that, you know, pitfalls that God just helped us to scale, help me to scale through. And I would make reference to one of it. And uh, this one, because I was just going over what to share in this meeting, and this one stood out for me as well. There was a time in my life I remember vividly, and that's one of the times I know that God really speaks. There was this day I went somewhere, and uh, leaving that place I went to, someone gave me a card. You know, growing up there, young girls, there was something, I was in the university then, I remember. And, you know, one of the things that young girls or ladies like to pride themselves about is, you know, having business cards of different guys, different men that you have met and all that. And I went somewhere one day and someone gave me a card. The man, yeah, it was actually a man. He gave me a business card and all that. And, you know, as soon as I left that place, I bought a, a bus. I was going, you know, moving on to my next destination. But right there in that bus, I heard a voice. And the voice I heard, the word I heard was, what you will not eat, you do not have to smell it. Because, you know, the card was like, okay, keep contact with me. You can call me. You can do this and that. But immediately I heard that voice. I knew what I was meant to do. I took up that card in my, right out from my purse. And the next thing I did was just shed it into pieces. Because I knew if I'm not going to keep contact with this person, why am I keeping the card? Why do I want to have the business card you know, with me? And that was one of those times. Because I look, maybe I heard this, sincerely, I heard a voice and I turned around to like, who spoke just now? There was no physical person next to me that spoke into my head, but I knew at that point it was God. And that was one of the ways I was able to avoid that pitfall. And that makes me, that was what made me refer to that verse that there's no temptation, but that you have, that God befalls you. That hasn't, somebody hasn't gone through, but God is faithful. It will make a way of escape. And God made a way of escape for me in that regard. So another thing that also kept me going by the grace of God, because I was I meant to share about what uh, helped me, is the fact that the fear of God was paramount in my heart. Thank God I schooled out of my, my secondary school, yeah, which is high school here, and uh, higher school and all that. I was away from home. My parents were in there. My guardian wasn't there. There was no one. So it was more like in the boarding school area. I, I went to secondary school in the boarding school. So it was more like, was like to an extent, it was like a free world you could do. I had people that were doing all things. I could see different things going on. But I thank God for his fear that was instilled in me before I left home. And, you know, that kept me as well. I want to open this verse to just uh, encourage us. Second place. And this, uh, I would refer to the life of Joseph here. Joseph, we knew what happened to him. At some point in time, he was, you know, away from his family, away from his kindred. And, you know, he faced diverse temptation. But there's this one that, you know, to me stands out as his response to the temptation. And that's found in Genesis 39. From verse 9, I'll read the 9b. You know, that was when um, the wife of Potiphar was trying to, like, you know, make him fall and all that. But there's this reaction of Joseph that stood up for me. He said, how could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. That's the NLT version. So Joseph saw the opportunity as wickedness. He saw it as a great act of wickedness against God. It wasn't just against his master. He knew if he did what he was, I know, he was being asked to do. 
he was committing a sin against God. His mom and dad were in there. There was no one you know, that was responsible, was meant to give account to in his immediate environment. But thank God for the fear of God that was instilled in the heart of Joseph. And that was what made Joseph, you know, to have. And the same thing, I believe, helped me as well. The fear of God. I was away from home. My higher, um, my secondary school, higher school, uh, senior high, my university days. After university, again, I went far away from home. No one was, you know, in my immediate environment to check on me, to check me, to say, okay, how are you faring? Have you read the Bible today? Have you done this? Have you had a quiet time? Thank God for what, um, um, I've forgotten her name right now, said about quiet time that she learned from young and godly. It really pays. You know, to have a time that you can relate, communicate with God. And, you know, that instills fear in us. It instills a fear. It's not a fear that torments. No. It's a fear that if I do those things, it's an act of wickedness against God. And mind you, it's not just against God. As I see, it's also against yourself. Because you will just, you know, be cutting down your days, your opportunities, the things God has planned for you. So I see the fear of God as one thing that helps me. The fear of God that was instilled in me by my relationship with him, right from the secondary school, right from the I institute uh, to the I institution to the university and all that. The fear of God stood out for me. I had the fear of God, and that helped me a great deal. Watching me, guiding my steps, my actions, my choices. So with that as well, I was able to scale through, you know, all the temptations that you know come unto man. The fear of God helped me. And another thing I'm happy to talk about here are the mistakes. Well, I would say, oh, there are some things that, yes, happened that I wish hadn't happened or I wish I didn't uh, do. But thank God that there are not things that, um, you know, had great prizes or great, great consequences. But some of the things I felt or I wish I knew better was is one of, the, one, one of the things we have here today, mentors. I didn't have that. I didn't have, you know, mentors that, you know, like uh, I was shared earlier, the place of the mentor it wasn't just spiritual things that the mentors help you with, help you with. No, all round, they guide you, they assist you, they give you advice, you know, check on you, your, your, your studies, your career path, which way are you going and all that. I didn't have that. I wish I had, you know, those opportunities. And that's why I see it as a great privilege for the young and godly, for young children these days, you know, to have such a platform as this, where you can have mentors assigned to you, who would, you know, help you, encourage you, not just in your spiritual life, your academics, your emotions, and all other things. We didn't have that. I didn't have that then. I wish I had that. So it's one thing I would encourage you to please take advantage of. Seize the opportunity. If you have a mentor, you're assigned to already, or if you have a choice of, you know, being asked if you need one, check it out. Take it, please. Don't let it go. You never can tell how that mentor would greatly help you in life. So that's one thing I want to leave with us that please, uh, it's one thing I didn't have, but please, I would encourage you if you're asked, if you're you know, willing to have one, if you're asked, if you want to have a mentor, please give your names to help you a great deal. So many things that, you know, choices, better choice I would have probably made in terms of career, in terms of some other things in life. I didn't make those ones. I wish I had, you know, I had those opportunities to, have, to you know, change those times, but thank God for where we are today. And also, um, once, okay, so that's what I said about, okay, without in place, having the mentor, making right choices, I believe it will help the growing up, young adults to go far in life. And that's one thing I want you to please take advantage of. Use it to the best of your abilities. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. And also one thing I would also want to say is that um, in growing up as well, please do not underestimate or do not put aside correction. When you're being corrected, when you're being reproved, when you're being challenged, when you're being instructed, please don't harden your heart. Proverbs says a child that is being corrected and hardens his heart will suddenly fall into you know, destruction. So please, children, young uh, adults, teenagers, when you're being corrected, probably by mentors, probably by your teachers, by your parents, especially spiritual people, spiritual authorities in your life, figures in your life, please and please be teachable. I have a teachable spirit. Take note of corrections. Take it with a heart that this person has the best of you, especially your parents. They have your best interests at heart. And that is why they would, you know, never stop. Never stop giving counsel. 
never stop correcting you. They won't just want you to know, go the path of destruction. They probably would have seen others you know, go through that path or they themselves might have scars that they are still nursing. There's an adage in my um, mother tongue that says the, the clear skin cannot be, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, a part of a skin that has a skirt can never be like the fresh one. It cannot be. So some parents are carrying some skirts today that they would not want you as a child to have, to carry. And so that's where we keep coming as parents to like challenge you, encourage you, instruct you, guide you, all because we do not want you to fall into the same mistakes that we fell into. I pray the Lord would help us and, um, you know, make the most of our time the most of opportunities around us and be the best. Bible says that he knows the plans he has for each and every one of you. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans to give you a future and a hope. I pray that the good plans of God will definitely come to pass in the lives of every young, every old, every teenager, every child in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you, man. That was profound. God bless you. There is no temptation that you are going through that is uncommon to man. And the scripture said, God will make a way of escape. And I quickly asked myself, will you take that way of escape? If God spoke in our auntie's heart and say, you don't want to eat it. Why are you smelling it? And she understood that what God is saying is that tear this, you don't need it. And she said, you know what? No, I'll tear it next week. The spirit of God does not strive with any man. Power of choice. The spirit of God will draw and say, okay, you have made your choice. It is well. Hallelujah. God bless you, ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. She's one of our mentors and we celebrate her. God bless you. Thank you for all you are doing for God's kingdom all the way from Calgary, Canada. Thank you. We have one more before we go today. And we have Uncle Abayomi. He's going to share his own experience. God bless you. So over to you. All right, Ma. Thank you, Ma. So, my name is uh, Abayomi Oluwasanya. Actually, the name Oluwasanya, I had to give myself that name because. But my former name was Ogunsanya. And so I actually came out from the family of idolatrous family from my idolatry, you know. And uh, I still met my, my parent worshiping idol, you know. There was a time within the year that they will worship idol. Hello? Hello. Uh, we can okay. hear you, sir. We can okay. hear you. Okay. What? But I, I, I have been trying to turn on the video, but it's like it's not responding. So I don't know why. So. We have that same problem. Okay. So now, what happened was I came out from a family highly religious, but ungodly. I to put it because or oh, my parents will be going to white garment church. They will be, they will, will be there from morning till around four o'clock. And when we come back from church, they will still have to give us some things, some incisions, some concussions and all those things. Uh, so the religion is not stopping uh, other things to be used. So I grew up in that, uh, in that environment. So, but a time came that I wanted to write my GSE stress exam. So I was so much bothered because I wanted to write science, I wanted to go into engineering. So, and the criteria was if I didn't meet up with five A's, I won't be able. So I was eager to pass with five A's at least so that I will be able to go into the science class and I'll be able to pass, I mean, to, to, to go into science class. So I was bothered. I was thinking what would happen. So a time came that one man came to our house. He said, 
he would like to invite me. So when he invited me to the church, it was God's full faith mission. So when I got to the church, I had the message. I said, this message was, this one is different from the one I've been hearing from this, my parent church. So I decided that I will be going to this my church. And my mom said, no, you cannot. How will you be leaving us and be going to another church? We will not give you food. I said, no problem. I, I accepted. So I started going to that church. But let me say that before the age of 16, I gave my life to Jesus. So because December of that year, December of every year is my birthday. So before that December, I think it was around, it was June that year that I gave my life to Jesus. But what I want to tell us is that before I gave my life to Jesus, there are so many things that I was pushing to by my parents, you know, something that had to do with sacrifice, so many things that had to do with shams and all those things. But the moment I gave my life to Jesus, I took my stand and I told them, this thing is not right. These things are not godly. And they said, you are still a small boy. You will soon be tired of it. It's just because you have just started. And they said so many things to discourage me from following the Lord. But the man that came to preach to me stood by me. Many times I will have questions. I will go to him because I knew quite well that my parents, they won't give me good answer. So I will run to that my parent, uh, that, to that my spiritual parent, that man that came to preach to me in that gospel faith mission. So he mentored me. He taught me how to stand. You know, by, I mean, the first thing he told me was my quiet time must be steady and continuous. So he told me to start with just reading five verses every day. And from that, that I can, I can grow from that. So I started talking to God every day. Early in the morning, around six o'clock, I will talk to God. I will ask for his direction. I will tell him all my, all my requests. And God has been answering. So what I want to tell you is this. It is a great opportunity for you to be in a godly environment. To be, to be, I mean, I, I mean, you, for you to have Christian parents is a great opportunity. I didn't grow up in that kind of environment, within that kind of environment. But when I gave my life to him, I took my stand. In fact, in that same church, there was one of the elders in that workforce. Is is she was a woman? She told true or false, that we gave our life to Jesus at the same time. She said, Excuse me, sir, we can't hear you. Just give him two minutes or something. He will be back. I guess it's just the network. It has to be because of the network. Because maybe it's snowy outside and maybe there's a block in the interception. Yes, so let's wait. We'll be back. We'll be back. I also want to hear that conclusion of the story. I want to know what this man told him. It's so peace and quiet. Yes, yeah, so before we get on Kwabai on me back, Quickly, I want to say that, especially for some of our friends that are joining for the first time, this is young and godly generation, a people that love the Lord. And like you have heard from different people, passionate, focused to be that boy, that girl, that woman, that man in our generation that will seek God and serve him, that will choose to be different. So we come here every month by the grace of God or every last Saturday, preferably. Only November has this kind of difference, but every month we try and target the last Saturday of the month. We're looking by the grace of 
God, January 28th, 2023, if Jesus tarry, we'll be back here. And I'll quickly drop in the chat my phone number and the email for Young and Godly. People have actually used the email. Sometimes I think people don't, don't use email, but I was right. I was wrong. So I've dropped the email, especially if you're new. So you'll be able to mail us if need arise. And that's my phone number, especially if you're new and if you are not gotten a mentor. If you're 13, from all that we've said, you're 13, we want to see to it that somebody check up on you and help you as you grow. If you can hear me, I'll come back to you quickly, my dear. So if you're 13 and above and you have no mentor, we want you to please note that email or phone number and get across to us. Now, let me see if Uncle Abayomi is back. Let me see if Uncle Abayomi is back. No, he's not back. He's not back. Young and godly, young and, sorry, that email is wrong. It should be young and godly Jen. My bad, please. Young and godly Jen at gmail.com. Jen at gmail.com. And if you're using that phone number, you just want to send a WhatsApp to Ross. The month of November, we don't come in like this, but between January and November, by the grace of Jesus, we come in once every month together. And we always have smaller groups as well. So if you if you have a mentor, like some of our mentees that spoke, we have smaller group of ladies, smaller groups of uh, young men, you know, that attach to somebody that we can interact and relate together. We're just waiting for Uncle Abayomi before we tidy up for this month. Uh, Pastor Remy, please check on him for me. You can call his phone number so we know. You can call his phone number. Yes, someone is asking. Yes, the, these, this has been recorded and it will be posted on our platform later. As a matter of fact, it's on YouTube now. So if you, someone is asking- Can I say my yes. question now, Ma? All right, carry on. Okay. Did you see our scores on, <sighs> uh, what was the get name on of this? On yes. the Kahoot game? Yes, I, I didn't see your score, but I saw the first oh. two or first three, yes. I saw it. We all saw it. Everybody was seeing it. But I didn't see your score. Oh man, it was a lot. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. So the first position went to Jamilo Jari, but we'll get across to her. Oh, okay. Pastor Remy, are you there, sir? I am here, I'm trying to track him down. Okay, thank you. Let's give a minute or two more. And after Wait, that, we'll we come to- are we recording this? Are we recording this? Yes, we always do, figure out. Yes, it's recorded. It's recorded, yes. It's recorded because we have some of our friends that couldn't join today. They always want to watch the video. And for someone like me, I always like to go back and watch the video and you know, see those things that we have been taught and keep them to heart. Hallelujah. Our generation, sure, praise God's name. I'm going through it to be sure if he's back. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord, most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most I, most I, 
God of heaven, most high ruler on the earth, most high king of nations, hallelujah. To God, most I. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will wrap up at this point. And I promise you, if I get the end of that gist, I'll post it on our platform so we can know what they told Uncle Abayomi when he first <clears throat> gave his life to Christ. I believe you have been blessed. Let's give God praise and we we'll pray together. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the journey of 2022. Thank you for every virtue, every grace, every lesson that you have taught us. Thank you for life. Thank you for protection, provision. Thank you for strength. Thank you because we appeared month after month and we only move from strength to strength. On this note in this year, Lord, we have come to say thank you. We allow you, we adore you. As a generation that you have chosen to stand for you, we commit ourselves to your hand. We pray that, Lord, we will not fail you in the name of Jesus. As we go and we remember to keep to our side, O oh God of the covenant, we know that you are faithful. You have told us today, you remind us again that you are a son and you are a shield. You will give grace and glory. No good thing will you withhold from us. As we go to the rest of the year, we pray that you will Keep us safe in the name of the Lord Jesus. If Jesus started, we'll be back again, 2023, celebrating your faithfulness, moving from strength to strength. In Jesus' exalted name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Unmute yourself. Oh, brother, Abraham is back. Amen. Uncle Abraham is back. Let's give him a moment before. We'll just Amen. give him a minute. He needs to finish that story for us, remember, before we sing our team song. All right, so we want you to finish that story for us quickly. What did they tell you? That woman told both of you that I gave your life before we just yeah. share our theme song. Thank okay. you. Sir. The woman said that uh, uh, both of you that gave your life to Jesus because you are still uh, cold blooded, you are still young, you, you've just started, you will soon be tired, you will soon be weary. And both of us, we told ourselves, we said we will never. And that woman has been a great challenge to us because we are still attending the same church and our mentor also was in the same church. So each time, even if we don't want to go to church because of the woman, sir, if the woman didn't see us, the woman may be thinking that we are weary. So we will make sure we go to church. And that was a great motivation for us, though the woman wanted to, dis um, to discourage us. So, and one thing that our mentor told us was, that we have to make sure our quiet time is steady, that we have to pray to God every morning, even if it is just five verses of the word of God. And we started with five verses. We make sure we read that every day and we obey what is there. So he also told us that we don't have to hide our identity. So every time we go out, we preach to people and that makes it difficult for us to commit sin because we have preached this place, we have preached that place. And even if you want to do anything, you say, ah, Pastor, ah, don't come and join us. Oh. Pastor, ah, you have just preached to us. Ah, no, let's excuse you. What we want to do, you will not like it. And that has, I mean, helped us to, 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 to keep away from a lot of evil, from a lot of compromise. Because they will say, ah, you pastor, no, don't let us involve you. You will not, no, 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 you can go first before we do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have been doing it with them before, but because they've realized that we have been preaching to them, but if we have been hiding our identity that, ah, I don't want my friends to know that I'm not a child of God. I don't want to preach to them. I just want to be doing it silently. And that would have caused us, I mean, caused our Christian life a great havoc. So mm -hmm. that is what I will also advise us to do. Don't hide your identity. Preach to your friends. Preach to many of them because you don't know that your friend may be that very person that the devil wants to use. But if you have ministers to him, 
he will not want to even put such a thing before you. Mm. So you would have avoided so many things. And that my mentor said, you don't know, maybe this person you have preached to today might be the thief that will come and rob you in the next two years. Maybe it's going to be that person that will block your way and rob you in the next six months. But you have preached to him today and he has become saved and you have avoided that danger. So hiding your identity will not help you in any way. Make sure you identify with Christ openly before everyone in your school, in any way you gather or in any way you associate, let them know what you stand for and the Lord will keep you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Don't hide your identity. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Unmute yourself, friends. And I hope all that God has taught you today and in the course of the year, you will go back and look into your notes. You will go through it and read and reflect. The Lord bless you. Let's sing our theme song together. Hallelujah. Our generation shall bring your name. Our generation shall bring your name.